In this section, we're going to talk about implementation. So best practices, SDKs, and look at a few of the concepts. Now, I uh, have a, a series of videos where I just go over some of the main concepts like identify, alias, uh, track, and a few other things uh, using the JavaScript library. So you can watch those to, to look at some individual concepts. I want to take this video to look at the, the high level options when it comes to implementing Mixpanel, right? So really, one of the first questions you want to make when, uh, when you start to implement Mixpanel is what SDK you want to use, right? Uh, in Mixpanel, actually, have quite a few of SDKs. So we have JavaScript, iOS, and Android as a client SDKs. And then we have some of the server-side SDKs like Python and Java, PHP, and so on, right? And of course, just a, a general HTTP uh, spec if you really wanted that. Typically, when we work with clients, what we tell them or, or really what, what we, how we want them to implement data is to really do the bulk of it as a server-side implementation and do a small amount as client-side. Uh, there's a few things that are typically easier to do on the client side initially. Uh, a lot of the work around identifying users, aliasing users, and so on. So things like sign up events, login events you know, in your product, those are easier on the client side. Um, a few reasons why, you know, there uh, some of the client side libraries already have a lot of built-in methods for that. So there's a lot of logic that you don't have to worry about, and you can, you can also automatically collect uh, a lot of default data. So if you imagine uh, client-side on the web, um, like a JavaScript library, you can automatically collect things like browser, take the IP address, convert it to city, region, and country, and so on. So really it's about, I would say about maybe like a 20%, a 20-80 split when it comes to implementation. So 20% on the client-side, and really 80% of the bulk of it on the server-side. The reason why we like to use server-side uh, much more is it tends to be easier to manage, especially as your product grows, and especially if you have a cross-platform product, right? So if you have an app that's available in, say, iOS, Android, and web, you might have some events that can be done across all three platforms and are really fundamentally very similar, right? So instead of manually tracking each one at the client level, you can do some tracking at the server side level, at the backend level, and simply um, have a flag or have a way of identifying if that event came from iOS, from Android, or from, or from web, right? Uh, so that, that's, that's been something that's, that's been quite helpful for product companies. If you have just a product that's just on web, or if you have, say, just an e-commerce store, um, and you don't have any mobile apps, right, you just have one, one platform, doing everything, doing everything client-side is not the worst. That's something that, that can be done, and it can be easier to, to get it done, right? Um, there is a couple other considerations when it comes to client-side. You know, we've seen a rise in things like ad blocks, uh, people blocking scripts and things like that. Those things could affect uh, or likely will affect any client-side implementation that you do, right? Uh, so those are just things that you have to be aware of in terms of how you manage them. Typically, for companies getting started, unless you're, you're a large company and you have a lot of experience in this, probably not the biggest thing to worry about, uh, but just for you to get a, a, an idea of how you can choose an SDK, right? Then there's actually uh, a secondary question, which is, should you even use an SDK or should you use something like the, the codeless tracking that Mixpanel offers, right? Uh, so this is something where you can uh, mix panel will collect uh, data for you automatically. And the way it works, uh, if you haven't seen it before, it, it typically, let's say on the web, it will collect things like uh, page loads, uh, clicks on the page. Um, I think it might do form submissions maybe. So it collects all this data automatically. And then you can go into an interface here, click on the web, go to the URL, and say, show me how many people click on this button. It will show you, you know, how many events have been collected uh, with that, and then you can create an event and then track it, right? So it's kind of point and click tracking. And you can do the same for iOS and Android. We actually don't have a lot of experience with this, which you know, in a way makes sense, right? We get hired to build out full mix run implementations. I think this would be quite helpful, especially if you don't have a lot of development resources and you're trying to get some data and in a way maybe prove the value to get for development resources. So this can be something that can be you know, it's just about enabling the auto track, as Mixman calls it, and then tracking a few things. I do think, you know, whenever we create uh, implementation plans, a lot of the data, or some of the data, not all of it, but some of the data that we want to track, is not really available uh, on the interface itself. That is, you know, we have some properties that are not available on the interface and couldn't be figured out by just point to click. They have to be calculated somehow before being sent to Mixpanel. So I, so I do see some, some eventual limitations with this kind of data tracking. Um, but not impossible, right? Same thing. You, there's, there's probably a lot of value you can get out of this. So if you don't have a lot of development resources, 
Alatrack can be a way for you to start tracking some events and seeing some, uh, some data coming out from that, right? Regardless of what you use, if you use their SDKs here or the code that's tracking, the, the second or I guess third thing you really want to think about is actually tracking plans. So really going through an actual data implementation plan uh, and create a tracking template, tracking document, is there Excel spreadsheets and so on. I included a short video below where I spent, I think about 10 minutes just talking about tracking plans, how to use them, why you should use them and so on. This is probably the, the biggest thing you can do to, to get the data you want. And you might find that your plan is you know, one thing, what gets actually implemented is another thing once it runs into real life limitations. Uh, but at least you can have an initial plan and you have a focus and you have uh, an initial starting point of what you want and why you want that data. And then from there you can, you can move on to, to implementing that data, right? Uh, so for now, uh, as, a, as a general introduction to best practices for mixed panel uh, implementation, uh, this video will cover, will, will cover those things. For now, just move on to you know, looking at the individual concepts. So track calls, identify alias, uh, setting people properties, uh, revenue tracking, all the, all the different special things that Mixpanel has. And I'll show you those things uh, using the JavaScript library. But of course, those concepts will translate into iOS and Android. One final point, the, the biggest issue companies run into when it comes to implementation is typically on the, on the identify uh, portion of it. Let me see if I can find it here. You know, manage, managing user identities. Uh, so this can be done using the Mixpanel the identify. And then typically we have a Mixpanel alias uh, to combine anonymous data with, with uh, identified data. Dive deeper into that video, spend some time looking at this. Uh, they actually have a couple resources on how to properly do it here. Actually, I think it's this one. Um, yeah, so really look at some of the best practices around how to manage identity. This is typically where we see a lot of issues come up with, with projects and companies that try to do it before. And if you don't get it right, then your data is broken. And it's not completely useless, but it, it's, it breaks it. Um, and it's not as useful as, as it could be. So really ensure that you understand this concept. I'll talk a little bit in my video. Uh, but two, this is, this is probably the thing that, that you, should, you need to get right. Um, and that can cause the biggest headaches for your team.